Good day, everyone. Welcome. Uh, we're just going to get ready uh, to start in about 30 seconds or so as we wait for some people to log in. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll start in about 25 seconds. Okay, good day everyone. Uh, welcome to the uh, VoxCo Survey Software exclusive webinar, uh, doing more with less using panels to increase responses. And again, thank you so much for joining us, much appreciated. My name is Sean Siring. I am uh, the Director of Business Development at VoxCo. Uh, for today's webinar, we're going to be exploring and walking through some of the best practices of creating survey research panels, and of course, leveraging panel portals. Um, Obviously, uh, these days in our you know, fast and, and really competitive world of, of data, data integrity and gathering relevant information uh, to target audiences, uh, the key, of course, is achieving unparalleled success with your software. And uh, we're going to speak a little bit about today uh, recruiting and fostering a panel of loyal survey respondents. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, using data to maximize panel response rates. And uh, we're going to obviously touch upon creating an engaging online portal, show you some really wonderful panels that have been created uh, so that you can have a firsthand look at uh, what you could possibly have uh, with the VoxCo solution. Should be a great webinar. Uh, so let me just introduce to you our guest and one of our my co-presenters. His name is Jason McGrath. He is our uh, pre, uh, senior pre-sales engineer. And, uh, I like to refer to him as guru of the software. Um, Thank Jason, you, you're welcome. So Jason bridges the gap between clients, uh, customers, uh, businesses, and the technology necessary to get to the heart of the required solution to fit the business need. Uh, with over 30 years of experience in both the market research and IT fields, Jason has uh, a lot of experience in core uh, method, market research, data collection, software development, uh, project management, uh, consultation, and company collaboration. Uh, Jason actually opened up his own and ran his own 57-seat uh, market research data collection call center uh, and uh, was and is an avid daily Voxco software user. Uh, he run and has uh, run all of the aspects of uh, the VoxCo tool. Uh, he sold his company a bit ago and came to work for VoxCo uh, full-time in 2012. So uh, his insight will be key in talking about uh, panels and panel portals. Uh, just so you know, the webinar today will last about 30 some odd minutes uh, and we will conclude with a question and answer period. Of course, you can ask your questions using the chat and the control panel. Uh, and you can access the control panel, of course, by clicking on the orange arrow uh, in your uh, in your uh, control panel piece. Uh, so you know, a recording of this webinar will be made available to you in the next few days. Uh, so without further delay, uh, let's go ahead and get started, Jason. Yes, uh, certainly. Now, one thing I'll just mention before we do get started is uh, that there will be an opportunity to ask questions. Uh, actually, in the uh, taskbar on uh, your screen with the webinar, there's uh, an area where you can pose questions. Sean and I will be taking questions at the end of the at the end of the session. Perfect, Jason. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much. Okay, so um, I know we have a mix of some folks on here who uh, are current VoxCo clients, so welcome. And for those of you that are not yet Vo VoxCo clients, I'll give you just a quick rundown of who we are and what we do. Uh, VoxCo, of course, has been in business since 1976. We handle uh, many industries via market research, public opinion and social researchers, corporations, universities, and academic institu institutions. We've had uh, 450 plus clients worldwide in 42 or 43 different countries. Um, we're located in, our head office is in Montreal, Canada, but we do have satellite offices around the world, the United States, Germany, France, and Australia. Um, some of the software that we are going to show you today in the, in the panel portals is available 
on our SaaS environment. And one mm-hmm. of the things that kind of makes us a little bit more unique is it's also available uh, on your own premises or on your own uh, cloud. Uh, so Jason, right over to you. Oh, sorry, next slide, Jason. Yes, sir. Okay, so um, before we get into the cost of, of uh, panels and, and the inefficiencies and such, I just want to really start with a, a brief description really on what it is. I know many of you may know, but to, just to clarify for some of you who may not know, uh, panel research is really a method of, of data collection from a, you know, a predetermined uh, group of targeted individuals, um, customers, uh, 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 people that you have that have joined your panels. Uh, it's a de- really a database of people who are uh, willing to participate in the surveys that you have. Uh, they're informed uh, time to time by you, uh, the client, for various questionnaires and can be rewarded for their participation through uh, various ways. And we'll talk a little bit about that l- later on. And it obviously is a very effective way to get consistent and uh, quality responses uh, f- for your surveys. And I think that's what uh, many of you are looking looking to do. Uh, so, Jason, I think I'll hand it right over to you, and we can talk a little bit about the uh, the cost of inefficiency and why panels really do matter. Jason? Absolutely. Yeah, thank you very much, Sean, and I uh, uh, welcome everyone. Thank you very much for your time today. Um, I think, Sean, you hit, uh, you hit it right on the head in terms of kind of the main benefits of a panel. Um, having run my own uh, uh, call center, as well as working with different organizations, uh, over the years, uh, getting not only the right sample, cost-effective sample, but respondents who are willing to participate uh, is probably the single biggest um, hurdle to a project's success or failure. And a benefit of a panel, um, outside of uh, having a sample, you know, that that you have been, can reach out to at any point in time because they're, they're your group, uh, you do have an opportunity to. Um, vet them before the the survey process so as part of the sign up process with a panel uh, helping to eliminate that fraud uh, becomes quite important Um, there's many uh, many areas that because they are a panelist they're signing up for you have opportunity to ensure they are who they are who they say they are uh, validate um, uh, location information there's absolutely nothing wrong when it's a panelist to ask for more information than you would a typical respondent uh, proof proof of location of where they live. Uh, we've got some clients that we work with that if they're in a particular profession, they actually require, in order to join the panel, a copy of the uh, credentials that the, the panelist has before they can join. And uh, a number of clients, Fosco clients, will uh, ensure uh, the people not only are who they say they are, that they're not in there more than once, you're not getting duplicates, that they are making referrals, they're quality referrals, Again, having the the the, the contacts uh, available, knowing in advance that they are who they say, say they are, you know that you can trust them when you're doing your data collection is, is key. Um, now, in terms of the cost, <laughs> excuse me, uh, there's always a cost associated with sample, whether you're reaching out and purchasing it, whether you're back in the days of cold calling when you'd be uh, literally doing telephone surveys, dialing hundreds of numbers to get one valid number. Uh, there's an investment of time, and the same goes with panelists. Uh, uh, you need to reward them, and one of the real benefits of a panel, uh, outside of the benefits to you as a as a researcher, is making it worthwhile to the panelists themselves. What is the benefit of it? It's not just a matter of hey, I want to give my input into this particular field or this particular topic, but um, there's there's got to be some rewards. Um, and kind of the two main areas that we see a lot of uh, uh, opportunity to, to provide value to the respondent is sharing the results or the findings. So when a survey is completed, giving a top line results to your panelists, uh, again, that only can be accessed by the panelists themselves is something that is uh, uh, you know, garners the need or desire to join the panel. Um, also, rewards. Now, incentives are a big part of any any uh, you know big research project today. And while one-off incentives are good, um, the and the and one-off by one-off uh, incentives, I mean you do the survey. At the end of the survey, you get the reward. You go on to the next project. You'll either get an incentive or you won't. Is the uh, ability to be able to um, uh, 
bank those points. So in the event that uh, a, a respondent doesn't necessarily want to cash out five dollars every time there's a survey, or ten dollars, or fifteen dollars, giving them the opportunity to bank that, keep that money uh, to a point where it gets them at a level where they want to be able to spend it, and then give them the option to redeem it for what they want. Again, also offers some real value. So you'll sometimes hear people say, "Well, you know what, panels." Uh, Panels or panel porters are only good if you're if you're doing gamification or if there's you know you're trying to make it fun for the respondent. Uh, it's it's not necessarily that gamification is great. You hear Calvin in the industry with the survey software, uh, but it's uh, it's more important to bring value and quality to why they should participate and how they participate. And all of that uh, assists with like I said the, the response rate, elimination of fraud, and the the cost uh, because of the uh, the fact you can reach out to these guys quickly and you know you're going to get fast response rates. Perfect. Thank you, Jason. My pleasure. Uh, just talking a little bit about, um, before we talk about the impact of panels and, and how it can help your organizations, um, you know, why, why should people even opt in for, uh, for survey panels? Obviously, uh, as Jason had mentioned, uh, the key is, is rewards and incentives that are available. Uh, there's obviously the, the scope and the scale of the projects that, that are, are there. Um, you know, it opens up for you as an organization to have that availability for more targeted and personalized research. Uh, you can build profiles of panel member, members over time. It allows you to keep a, a, a well-documented history of the surveys taken by your panelists, uh, the rewards that they received. You can see who's most active, who's not active. Uh, you can do short and simple recruitment. Uh, via the panels and, and obviously uh, with the panel portal, you give access to the participants to allow you to have uh, unprecedented views, uh, 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 communication boards. And again, we're going to show you a, a few of those examples uh, shortly. Uh, so Jason, I'll hand it back to you to talk a little bit about the impact of, uh, of panels on, on Certainly. organizations. Certainly, uh, Sean, thank you very much. Um, in the last slide, I talked a little bit, uh, well, primarily about the, uh, associating cost and, and quality of response. Uh, another key factor is the timing uh, associated with it. If you have a well-maintained panel with engaged respondents who are being adequately rewarded, both in terms of uh, incentives as well as value for being part of the panelist, you can turn around survey projects very quickly. Um, excuse me, the fact that you've got ready selected individuals who are engaged and willing to participate um, cuts the cost and time down for delivery. And as you know, time is cost uh, in all aspects of business. Uh, so being able to rely on that uh, group, um, knowing that when you send out a survey, you're going to get an 80 to 90% response rate. You know, the uh, uh, the markets and the, the demographics that you're going to be targeting and hitting are, are solid and on. Um, and because this is a, a kind of a sidebar to the main, the main research projects you're doing, you can constantly be growing and evolving the panel. So by ensuring that it is um, uh, constantly being brought in uh, new individuals with, uh, with fresh ideas, uh, covering the, the areas that you need to in terms of age and demographic uh, really, really assist uh, with that. So some of the impacts of having that solid panel, um, in addition to being able to cut down costs because of the time associated with it, um, but having a more um, qualified respondent, so to speak, as well as um, uh, making it important for them to provide uh, quality, you know, open ends and verbatim. So it's not just, you know, don't know or you know, not applicables and they're rushing to get to the next one. Uh, they take pride and value into it, which gives you that consistent, engaged, respondent, richer data. Um, and because of the, the fact that, you know, you can go out to these individuals, uh, streamlining the process is really, really important. Um, you can count on your, your timelines uh, as, a, as a researcher because you know approximately how long it's going to take you to get the completes you need excuse me with your panel that you've been working for over over a time and if you need to do a quick ad hoc or a, a reach out to the panelists um, you've got multiple methods so we'll see when we look at the portal um, in addition to the panel being in the collection of individuals the portal gives the panelists kind of self-serve capability 
So if you need to do quick pulls or even an omnibus where you won't necessarily um, only do uh, outbound uh, communication or recruitment from uh, you know uh, email or text, SMS, um, but providing them access directly within the portal with notifications from the portal that, hey, we've got two more questions that we'd really like some input on. Um, you don't have to go back out to the full group, uh, for example. So um, yeah, so I think that would be, uh, that would be what it on that one, Sean. Perfect. All Thank right, you. thanks, Jason. Let's move on to the next slide. Uh, this, I, I think what, what's really important, obviously there's pros and cons of having a panel. Um, you know, obviously the, the one, many of the pros obviously outweigh the cons. You know, you, you have improved uh, quality of responses, less turnaround time, cost effective, that sort of thing. Uh, sometimes, you know, uh, the sample can be a tad bit biased, maybe, maybe some data integrity issues, but uh, we can talk about that as well with the Voxco uh, solution, and we're going to show you a little bit of what our panel looks like um, in uh, in a few minutes. But uh, I'll let Jason talk about some of the key advantages of using the panel uh, within the Voxco tool. Um, and, and obviously, what's really important here is to uh, make sure that you're saving time, you're saving money. Uh, efficiency is key, um, and that will help you get your surveys out faster and hopefully the turnaround uh, be a lot quicker, and your, your response rates will be significantly higher. Well, Jason, some key advantages yes. of using the panel. What Thank do you, you say, Sean. <laughs> well, uh, I'm going to start with what you said initially um, about some of the cons, and you can overcome the cons, and there, there's, there is very too much, there are two very different schools of thought as it pertains to, to panels. There's people who love them, and there's people that feel they're not an adequate um, pool of uh, individuals to get a, a general population feel that you're limiting yourself in terms of scope. Um, I throw that back to the individuals uh, to take the onus to ensure that the panel does meet the requirements of a solid research project. So. You don't just get the low-hanging fruit. You don't just do a recruitment drive and say, okay, this is we got what we got and that's it. And unfortunately, we don't have a good spread of, of age. We don't have a good spread geographically because we're, we're, we're low in the Maritimes or, or in uh, you know, the, the islands in, in the U.S. So um, taking those cons and looking at them individually and then ensuring that the panel that you're building offsets those cons to ensure that you do have a solid set of individuals that you can go to on a regular basis uh, is key. Um, and, and the other, outside of that, uh, and I'm in the camp obviously of the panel believer, um, I've, I've seen uh, some really great projects come together quickly with some high quality research using a, a well-defined and, and grown panel. Um, and some, some of these clients have panels that go back you know, 15, 10, 15 years. I mean, they literally have been uh, forging that relationship and maintaining it all of that time. So <laughs> retention is also an important part of a panel, being able to have, you know, as we said, fast time, cost effective. Uh, retention, I think, is key. Um, and knowing that you can count on these individuals on a, on a uh, re required basis to target right. specific groups over time. Yeah, I mean, it, as we've noted here on the slide, you can see there's uh, seven key points. Uh, uh, many of you already know uh, probably all of these or, or most of them. You know, it obviously uh, improves the quality of your responses. The turnaround time is significantly faster because you already have your sample ready to go. And if you don't, it, it's a few clicks of a button, as Jason will show uh, uh, soon. Uh, of just getting your sample together for the demographic or demographics that you need. Um, and then it allows for you to get that process right through. So, uh, Jason, let's move to the next slide. Certainly. So, uh, what really sets a good panel provider apart? Um, aside from the pieces that you as a company or as an individual would have to do by you know, keeping the surveys as short as possible or rewarding those panelists with, uh, you know, uh, for their contributions, you know, delivering a, a personalized experience, which you can have through uh, the software uh, and through a panel portal that we're going to show. Uh, and I'm excited to show these portals and I keep mentioning it because it's, they, we do a really good job at making it uh, participant friendly. 
Um, and of course, it allows you as well to be clear and consistent in the communications with your panelists. So, uh, Jason, let's talk a little bit about then uh, what sets a good panel provider apart from the rest. Yep, certainly. Um, and this kind of uh, high, like the question itself actually raises a question, I'm sure, in some people's minds. Um, Voxco, while we do provide sample through one of our partners, Amplia, uh, we provide specifically the database and the infrastructure needed for you to create your own panel. When you typically think of a panel provider, you think of you know third-party panel providers, like some of the big ones, Synthinata, et cetera. We're not talking about them. Although sometimes you will need to bring in uh, third-party panel providers to help supplement uh, your panel because you may not have yet fully evolved it to the where you need it to be. I'm speaking specifically about your panel um, using a tool like Voxco Panel to create uh, an efficient and effective panel. Um, and how how can we as a panel provider, i.e. The, the, the infrastructure required, uh, ease of use, as you'll see when I take us into the system, it's got to be it's got to be simple. You don't need a lot of complicated screens. Um, you want to make sure it makes sense. Um, the integrated reward system is absolutely uh, imperative for the reasons not only that I mentioned earlier, uh, but to ensure uh, proper accounting, uh, making it easier for you uh, to to bill back to to clients on on incentive based projects. Um, also ensuring that. If panelists are not redeeming points, that you have a way of managing that in the sense that uh, do the points expire? Again, two trains of thought on that. Um, Jason, could uh, you, um, I'm sorry to interrupt, but yeah, of course not. Maybe talk a little bit about how the Voxco system can integrate with different rewards. Oh, uh, yeah, please, uh, a great, great idea, Sean. Yeah, yeah, good point. While Voxco itself does not do the actual um, uh, issuing of, of rewards we do track the points and, and you'll see this in the system in a few minutes when i show you so you assign a point to voxco uh, to a survey via voxco for a survey the respondent completes the survey they get those points those points are then translated into rewards using third-party panel providers uh, sorry uh, uh redemption uh, providers uh, instead of providers so we work with many um we've worked with uh, uh bhn or ribbon uh Currency Alliance uh, here in Canada, Gift Pay uh, within Europe. Um, there's some really great providers out there. Virtual Incentives is one that we've uh, been wanting to work with for for quite some time. Here's some great things about them. Uh, there's a new organization we're we're starting to work with in Sweden that has a tool called uh, Go Gift. Um, and again, ultimately, uh, you want a system that provides. Uh, rich rewards in the markets that your panelists are in with a lot of variety as well as ensuring um, you know ease of use good solid connectivity capabilities a lot of these tools have great APIs to allow us to link them to the to the panel portal uh, and make it easy and quick and easy so yeah there's there's a lot of different providers out there it really depends on uh, my recommendation is again you've got the proper rewards in a given market uh, it's cost effective and uh, they're reliable Perfect. Thank you. Um, so uh, with the different uh, attributes within the panel management tool, the detailed panelist activity, uh, obviously the personal experience through the portal, and uh, obviously a custom uh, portal creation, uh, which will show you how, how easy it can be done, uh, really, sh really key points of, of making a panel provider above and beyond some of the other uh, providers that are out there. And I think Voxco, uh, through our history, has done really well in, in hitting all of these points uh, bang on. Um, so Jason, let's move on to the next uh, next slide. Sure. Um, and from here, I think we will uh, talk a little bit about, um, uh, you know, how, how does the panel manager enhance the panelist experience? And I think uh, by, by showing you, so Jason, yeah. let's let's, uh, let's dive in on the on the panel Voxco panel manager solution. We'll we'll spend maybe two minutes, three minutes max, just to kind of give you the big highlights, and then talk a little bit about uh, the the portals and and the magic uh, of, of how it works from there. Thank you very much, Sean. Um, also, when we speak of attributes, just in case you're not familiar, attributes are basically data points or fields that you're tracking on your on your respondents and on the points we saw in that last slide, 
I think some of the key points are uh, what you're going to see here, um, having everything all connected and having data uh, sharing back and forth. The way the Voxco panel works, we're going to walk through it right here now, is you define and set up your panel. You're able to uh, define any and all of the fields you want to track on your panelists. And these can be of all the major data points and types. Um, you know, we track whether it's personally identifiable information so that you can uh, control who sees what data. Um, do you want it to automatically flow back and forth from a survey? So, for example, if, if data is updated in a survey that's also part of the panel, you want that to automatically update so that you don't have to do any exporting, importing, exporting, being able to do batch updates. So the ultimate benefit besides the configuration, the setup of a panel, uh, being able to import in existing panels, uh, panelists, sorry, Vosco's got a really, really nice uh, validation process, which allows you to import in external uh, panelists uh, if you're doing an initial bulk upload and it'll find all inconsistencies for you so if there's any duplication if the rules that you've defined is it a required field and should a drop down have five values in it not ten uh, it will identify all those issues and give you an opportunity to clean them up as as, as you go forward and then ultimately um, the panelist uh, tracking is the key so when you look here at the at a given panelist I'm able to see all of the information that the panelist has done since joining the panel. So every survey they've been invited into, whether or not they completed it, um, if there were rewards uh, provided, did they actually receive and spend those rewards? I've got a full tracking of all information. Uh, any changes that occurred to the panelist core data as well is also tracked and versioned so I can see all of the information associated with my panelists, when the information is changed. And this can be changed via a survey, the portal, or through the interface itself. So all very seamless uh, to, the, to the respondent themselves. Um, in addition to just tracking the information, there's a really powerful sampling tool, which allows you, when you're ready to do a new survey, to identify who are you going to survey. I can do random selections of, of particular uh, uh, panelists from within my overall panel. Um, I can include or exclude other projects that they've worked on, so I can really fine tune who it is. Um, in addition to that, I've got three other criteria, what prior activity history they have been. Maybe I only wanna focus on people who've done a survey in the last 30 days. Um, all those fields we're tracking on them. And this is also quite unique, I think, to Voxco, is every answer to every survey question that any panelist has provided can also be used for that sample. And then you can, you can um, you know, tumble this as many times as you need to, you get the counts you need. And then I'll just wrap it up on the panel side, Sean, with the, uh, um, the health. So what stats are available on your panel? How many people are involved? What's your current outgoing uh, points uh, that your exposure is for you know, people cashing out their points um, and maintaining and keeping uh, an eye on performance in terms of how many people are being invited and completing a survey, making sure that you're keeping people engaged. Um, Makes sense. So yeah. Super. Well, thank you so much for that walkthrough. Obviously there's a lot more to it. We kind of showed you a very high level uh, view of the panel from the inside of the Voxco solution. Uh, you have the ability to have a seamless communication between your online tool and the panels. Um, these work hand in hand. Uh, it's, it allows for real-time data synchronization. It allows you to update panelists as, as needed. Uh, you can even have a survey if you're, you feel your, your, your panel sample is maybe outdated or hasn't been updated in some time. You can do a very simple, quick survey uh, to those panelists and just ask them to confirm their information, make sure it's, it's, it's accurate. All this in making uh, the ability of having your panelists uh, available uh, and, and, and having that sample and getting the highest answer rates uh, as possible. So... We have at Voxco, uh, as I mentioned, about 450 plus clients, close to 500 clients worldwide. Uh, a very large proportion of those are using panel. Uh, but one of those um, that we would like to talk just a little bit about uh, is uh, the John Deere group. And I know, Jason, you've worked a little bit with them, uh, actually more than a little, you've worked a lot with them. Uh, and also created the panel portals for that group. Uh, so let's go to the next slide and we'll talk a little bit about what the John Deere uh, group uses 
for Panel Manager and for the Panel Portal, which will lead us right into the piece de resistance of our presentation really is the, the portals uh, and, and what you can do with them. Jason. Super. Thank you, Sean. Um, yeah, John Deere is a really good example of how um, an organization can maximize communication with their key stakeholder groups. Um, like a lot of our clients, the end client, in this case, the corporation, for example, is typically um, one step away from Boxco. Our, our clients typically are the market research companies, the agencies whose end client is the John Deere's of the world. But then we also have direct company project, uh, clients as well, who they are directly working with Boxco and have a, their own panel for their own customers. Now, John Deere, as I said, is, is, is the latter or the, the prior. Um, and there was two main groups that they were most interested in reaching uh, in, a, in the most efficient and effective way. They've always had issues with response rates. And these were around initially their retailers, uh, their North American retailers. So it's a very exclusive uh, panel. Uh, in the sense that you have to be a retailer uh, for John Deere, um, but being able to give them the opportunity to to be part of that panel and then reach out and provide feedback as well as input into the future of of models and features that are coming out in in future technology that that John Deere is putting out, and that one went really well to the point where they actually expanded it. At, to a separate uh, project with uh, their, their their customers. And we went uh, global with this um, in over, I think, uh, uh, eight or nine different markets um, and some of John Deere's most difficult markets to reach uh, and, and communicate with. Um, and with this one, it, was, it wasn't just North America, so it had multiple languages um, and multiple uh, product lines that were actually servicing in each of the different markets that, uh, that that provided itself very interesting and i won't be showing the john deere tool but i will be talking about some other ones in, in a minute when we get into there yeah um and, and just to finish off on the john deere side just before we get into uh, uh the, the portal itself uh what's really great about that piece and and if you're looking at doing your own panels and your own portals. Boxco uh, Panel Manager has the ability to have multiple panels within the database. So you don't need to have just one big panel and try to figure it out. You can separate that into multiple panels. Uh, it can be customers, uh, managers, uh, uh, you know, different clients. You can have six different clients in your panel if you want. Uh, it's, it's quite a um, robust, system that allows you to have flexibility and accessibility to your sample as you need it and of course what's key to that is allowing the individuals in your panel to have a way in a way to visualize get the information quickly see what they have what can they redeem and through that we came up with the concept of the voxel panel portal and this is uh, a real key piece to the portal, uh, to, sorry, to the panel enhanced uh, module. Uh, so Jason, maybe explain the portal, what it is, what it can do, and how it really does work efficiently with the Voxco uh, panel and line solutions. You got it, absolutely. Um, awesome. And I think I'll do that as part of a show and tell, Sean. So wow. you did a good job here outlining the kind of the, the kind the, the, the overall pieces. But let me explain it specifically. I prefer um, show and tell. Yeah, yeah. One of the one of the I think the real differentiator on the Voxco's portal is a very customized experience for the customer and the end panels. This isn't like a cookie cutter portal um, that you get from a lot of the organizations where everybody has the same layout, the same look and feel, same login, same URL to access it. We work very closely with the client to ensure not only the look and feel, um, the branding, uh, it meets in their specific requirements, it's talking to their particular panelists and future panelists. Um, and Voxco, uh, uh, through its partner KLM and, and uh, the Voxco panel tied to the online side. So all three of these things work together. So you've got Voxco online, which does the surveys. It's fed through Voxco panel, which handles all of the, the tracking and the, the, the productivity associated with long-term panelist uh, activity, et cetera. And then the portal, 
the portal feeds everything to the panel that Boxco Online needs to use. Now, here's an example. So, Vets Panel is one of our our clients. The end uh, the end client uh, actually owns this panel. They're the CM Research out of the UK. They have given me permission to access the the, the panel, although for just my information, obviously. Um, so people can join the panel directly here. I'm going to jump right in as a panelist and log in. So everything was fully built and customized for um, uh, for uh, CM Research and Vets Panel, and they provided there's three main things they wanted to provide their members um a was the ability to be able to, to track and redeem points um they're also in about 12 different uh 12 different countries uh, 14 different languages and uh, the tool uh, handles all currencies and all languages as a panelist i can take surveys when i when i am completing my surveys not only do i earn points but i get uh, top line result information from those surveys I've, I've provided in. So taking surveys, um, redeeming for points, and then the second, uh, I think of the three, is keeping their data current and up to date. Being able to do a, a comprehensive profile where panelists can be asked for key pieces of information so that when you're doing your your um, surveys, that you have the right individuals um, being surveyed at the right point in time uh, and uh, evolving this over time. So being able to really provide integrated profiling of the panelists, uh, the ability to add to those profiles, and then ultimately redeem. Uh, so being able to take all those points that were earned and and cash them out um, and in this particular case they have kind of three main ways uh panelists can can donate to charities um and that's a one check that's issued by the end of the at the end of the year to the, the country uh but sorry by the company to the various uh organizations within the countries that were selected uh and then we have the uh the gift cards and uh, this is an example of the, the bhn or the ribbon um, reward gallery so based on the points that I have, and I have 500, I am able to redeem four specific rewards that the client, the customer in this case, can, can provide to the panelists to select. Um, and then the panelists can make the ultimate determination of what it is they want to redeem and uh, how much they want to redeem. And this all immediately talks to the, the panel. It automatically updates all of the points and everything automatically. There's nothing uh, that needs to be done secondary to this. Same with the profile. If the panelists update their information, they automatically update immediately to the panel. That's used for sampling within the survey. Uh, and any surveys that are completed in the panel portal are also automatically marked as completed so that they won't be sent out reminder emails. Everything talks together uh, and just makes it more efficient and effective, not only for the panelists or the survey participants, but for those that are actually executing the projects. And just to show you a difference in, in look and feel, um, we also have worked with uh, an organization who specifically um, uh, focuses on um, uh, chefs or the uh, culinary industry. And we originally started just in uh, the United States with them, but over time uh, we expanded it so that uh, it's, it's taking on a global uh, market. So North America, Canada, the US, England, and then there's also other countries. So in addition to be offering different uh, languages, uh, it is also providing um, the ability for a single panel uh, portal to talk to multiple panels at the same time. Um, and in a very similar in the sense that I'm able to take my surveys, uh, panelists can see their full, uh, their points rewards, uh, they can redeem, I can update my profile. In this case, I have a refer a friend option where I can receive redeem uh, additional points if I refer someone who's then vetted, joins, takes some surveys, um, et cetera. So uh, just a little bit of a, a feel, I think, Sean, of two different ones that, we, yes. that we've that uh, we set up, and I think it gives a good overview of, of how it looks. Absolutely. I think the key takeaway for for this specific uh, piece, the, the, the panel portal uh, piece, is that it is 100% customizable. Uh, yes. Look and feel. Uh, anything and everything that you want uh, can be discussed and talked about. Um, we're really good at making sure that uh, it's customized to exactly the way that you and or your customers would want it to, to look like, to feel like for the, the experience of the person. So um, that's, that's really what we wanted to show in terms of portals and panel management itself. So, Overall, uh, 
just some takeaways on on you know how uh, portals and 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 panel management can really help your your business and and keep it uh, cost effective. Obviously, um, is is one of the key points. Uh, portals and and panels, the the engagement, the higher response rates um, are are key. And just a reminder, we're gonna we're gonna go on with uh, some question and answer uh, right after this. So please feel free enter in some uh, questions in the port in the uh, question tab. We'll be happy to answer them right after this. Um, so yeah, the, the the panels, the portal, streamlining engagement, obviously higher response rates. Every every person in our industry wants as high of a response rate as possible on all of their surveys. Uh, that means improved uh, cost effectiveness, uh, uh, profitability. Uh, you obviously want to make sure that you have data quality uh, and we help with a few areas in that respect as well. Um, obviously reducing costs by not having to go out and buy sample or you know uh, trying to figure out what what demographics you want to use. And then of course the biggest thing is customizing. Uh, and, and having an engaging and, and enhanced user experience uh, with, for your customers. Uh, Jason, anything else to add to that? Uh, no, Sean. I think I think that's uh, I think that's it. Other than to say we're you know we're, we're here to assist uh, not only in um, you know coming to us for the software, but we've got a lot of experience with organizations and assisting in the best way to recruit new panelists and things like that. So I see that one of the questions that have come up. Uh, already that we can get into a little more detail but i think that was a good overview okay. sean um Super. If, if people are if we aren't able to answer all of the questions uh, which hopefully we will please just reach out to us and uh, we can have one-on-one -on -one meetings uh more than happy to discuss the opportunity yeah there's uh there's a couple of uh couple of questions that, that i see um let's see here uh one question has come what is the best way to recruit new panelists Jason? Yeah, absolutely. Um, which the, what, it depends on what market you're going for. If it's a specific organization like what we just saw with Technomic and with CM Research or Vets panel, um, they've got a, a captive audience, if you will, in terms of who it is they're trying to speak to. I know uh, going to trade shows um, and looking to recruit panelists at the booth or at the show specifically, getting access to particular lists joining associations and getting getting uh, details associated with that is key advertising in the right areas um, if it is something like a, a general population survey um, uh, supplementing it with with phone calls um, where you're you're actually phoning uh, into areas that may be particularly weak I mentioned Atlantic Canada as a, an area that tends to be underrepresented and sometimes difficult to get uh, completes in and um, doing a targeted telephone survey campaign in that area to do specific recruitment are, are all uh, channels that I've seen our clients uh, use to to help yeah. boost up their their numbers. Also, uh, reaching into third-party panel providers. Now, I mentioned our partners, Amplia. Um, Voxco offers um, the ability to uh, to bring in panelists or to use panelists, purchase sample via the Zamplia tool, and it goes out to about 14 different of these Synthinata type organizations that ties them in. Um, a number of these organizations will allow you to recruit their panelists as long as it's something that's pre predefined in advance, so they cost more, and there's a subset of the list. But those are also ways that you can you can work with that okay. with Voxco. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, uh, and again, Voxco audience uh, is a great tool. Again, that helps with integration. Uh, no need for integration because everything is all within one one tool. So you would have your sample, your sample provider, your panel, your online tool, your portal, all all talking and integrated in one. Uh, yeah. Another question, Jason. Example, example yeah. is also AKA Voxco and right. uh, uh, Vox uh, audience. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Exactly. No problem. Uh, another question is, what's the minimum panel size for it to be effective? And does that matter? Oh, good question. Um, yes, uh, it does matter. Um, I mentioned about having to supplement your panel um, uh, sometimes because you may not have 
the specific target group that you're looking for. Um, it's like any it's like any sampling group. If you got if you if you can get the 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 uh, quality research that you need out of 500 panelists um, who are engaged and providing quality data, uh, and that's all you need for a good representative sample, that's all you need. Um, it really will depend on the type of projects that you're working on. Bigger is not always better, although uh, bigger tends to give you more capability to, to dive into specific sub, sub segments. Um, but uh, from, a, from a size perspective, the, the quality of the research doesn't matter. I know Boxco has has some minimum, Sean, with the number of panelists that we have uh, yeah. as part of a panel. Yeah, we prefer that it's uh, about a minimum of, of 500 panelists, but I mean, we're open to helping you grow your, your, your panel. Uh, so definitely uh, flexible and open to speaking about it. Uh, Jason, do surveys have to be uh, sorry? Do surveys have to be hosted on Voxco or other platforms supported? And uh, and if uh, it's client hosting, uh, if, sorry, I'm, I'm reading quickly here. If you have a client hosting a survey on their platform, can our panel be taking surveys uh, in the real time? Yes, great question. Um, the short answer is yes. You are able to use um, third-party survey tools to conduct the actual research. Voxco Online is always needed uh, with Voxco Panel to do the sampling, um, and it can be used for doing the invitation either via email or, or SMS. Um, if you if you would prefer to do it completely externally, you could generate unique links. But the benefit of using the Voxco tool, and it's commonly set up the way that a lot of different providers are, um, where you have uh, redirects at the end of the third party uh, tool. So you would do your sampling from Voxco. It would create a Voxco survey that would redirect you to an external survey. Any any tool, Qualtrics, any of the other guys that are are out there. Um, and then at the end of that survey, there's redirects back into the Voxco survey to set the disposition, so that you know who's completed, who's screened out, over and all that. Uh, but you do require the base Voxco online to use the third parties uh, provider. Perfect. Thank you, Jason. You answered my next question, which was, do you need to have the online tool for to use Voxco panel? And the answer is yes. Yes. yes, um, yes exactly. Uh, another question here, a couple more uh, before we uh, end this. Um, how are the portals created and can Voxco help in that creation? Um, the portal, not the panel, the portal the itself. Portal, the portal. Yeah. Okay. Itself. So, yep. So the portal is created. Um, uh, using uh, a, a tool like WordPress or one of the other provide tools that are out there. Um, so our team actually does custom custom work development, not only graphical design, but um, all of the connectivity to the Voxco panel is all done through APIs. So the client absolutely is involved in what they want to have part of the project you know what are the function functions they want what's the look and feel that they want but it tends to be our group that does the actual execution of the portal we actually develop it um, some of that can be passed back to the client to maintain in terms of you know content on different uh, pages and look and feel of the site over time but the core integration components we uh, we can provide that uh, either as a kind of a turnkey service. If it's an organization that you have your own IT resources or you're very IT savvy, you have you have IT developers, you do a lot of API work already. You absolutely can build a portal using the Voxco APIs, and we absolutely can be brought in um, to help consult with that. Uh, so it really depends on the specific requirements. Perfect. That's wonderful. Um... Do you recommend panelists be super users of whatever it is that you're surveying, or can it be anyone? Oh, good question. Um, it can be anyone. Um, again, the, the 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 market that you're going after, the type of research you do, helps really to define it. I know I mentioned where we brought up John Deere as an example, very specific group as a retailer. But um, I mean, we've got organizations who are they provide public transit, so their average the average panelist who's joining the panel take the bus or the subway, and um, they can be of all age, education level, um, you know, diverse backgrounds. There's there's really no no limit. Perfect. Um, is it um, is it 
and and what is the easiest way to set up a successful reward system? Um, that's a good question. Uh, in, in terms of successful, uh, ultimately it has to meet both the needs of the panelists or the respondent and you as the as the organization. Um, is it cost effective, right? Does it make your life easier in terms of doing uh, distribution of incentives? Uh, not like the good old days, you had to cut checks and physically mail them, right? Making it a lot easier to get that information out there. Having good accounting and reports that are available from the from the provider. And then on the panelist side, making it really easy to redeem and having support. If something goes wrong, they lose their their reward. Is there a quick, easy way to redeem it? Those are, I think, probably the two main important uh, aspects of a successful panel. So it's uh, so basically, it's really simple to to set up a procedure for incentives and rewards within the Voxel panel management tool. Oh, absolutely, yeah, it's 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 there. It's already there. Wonderful. Um, another question that has come up is, um, uh, sorry, just reading it through. Uh, how can I use panelist attributes to trigger specific actions, and is that possible? Ah, yes, indeed it is. Um, so, for example, of, can, it, can it trigger an email? Can it trigger yeah, yeah, another yeah. survey? Yeah, yeah, great, great question. Um, as I mentioned, attributes are simply data points, so it's usually a field. A field can be either panel or it could be part of a survey. Um, depending on the value of any of those questions or fields, you can absolutely trigger certain actions, right? It, it, on the survey side, skipping questions, showing or hiding questions, triggering an email um, that may, you know, either send a copy of the respondent, uh, the, the completed survey by an attachment, or as you said, Sean, what we call daisy chaining, where at the end of this survey, because they qualified and answered the questionnaire the specific way, they now qualify for phase two of the project. And I want to initially launch it right from within the first survey. You can absolutely do so. It's all done using our, our advanced logic within the survey tool. Good, good answer. Um, is it is it possible to track IP addresses as a preventative measure for fraudulent uh, profiles and such? It is, um, it is indeed. Um, so Voxco um, Online um, pr provides two kind of main areas. One is IP address. The other one is geolocation. Um, IP address is um, a little difficult, a little more difficult when you're dealing with multiple organizations, sort of multiple individuals from a given organization. And we talked about a veterinarian group, right? If they happen to have a big office with 50 vets and they're all working out of the same building, they're all going to have the same IP address. But that might be fine. I know that geographically they're in the right location, but I wouldn't necessarily want to limit to only one person with that IP address. But yes, you can capture geolocation and or IP address. Super. And I think we'll uh, we'll do one more, and then we'll we'll call it a day. Sure. Um, do you have any suggestions on what is the best way uh, to get in contact with Voxco and how to um, begin this process of setting up a software like this? Certainly. Um... Many different avenues. Um, uh, the first one of which is you'll see at the end of this uh, slideshow, as well as the details that we're going to provide, there will be contact information. You can see at the bottom of the page that I'm on here, there is uh, a little bit more information that you can uh, view online on our website. As well, uh, within that, there will be contact us as well as set up or request a demo. Um, pick up the phone, uh, reach out to us. Uh, for those of you who are customers, um, reach out to your account manager or your uh, customer success uh, uh, contact and uh, would be more than happy to to reach out. And I know, Sean, that's one of your areas of expertise. Uh, what would you add to that? I would add uh, visiting our website for additional information and certainly reaching out to us uh, by email, telephone, um, and we'll be more than happy to help out and uh, discuss your needs and how the Voxco solutions can can certainly help. Excellent. All right. Well, Mr. McGrath, uh, very engaging, very interesting, uh, really exciting pieces of information provided today. Thank you so much for your insight. Absolutely. Um, and thank you very much for your input as well, Sean. You were a very active participant in this. I appreciate all of your all of your My points. pleasure. I, I, we certainly appreciate all of you joining us today.
Uh, it was absolutely our pleasure uh, providing this to you. And again, as I mentioned, our team will be providing you a recording uh, for this uh, webinar uh, in the coming days. Um, that is our presentation for today. Uh, we do really thank you for joining us. Uh, we appreciate your time. Uh, thank you so much. Have a wonderful day and a great long weekend ahead if you are uh, lucky enough to have one. Uh, otherwise, we will see you again soon. Have a wonderful day.